har my name is Shannon Lee Fisser. I'm also known as Shan. On the 15th of January 2017, I was bitten by a mongoose on my hand. And 24 hours later, I started reacting to something and landed up in the hospital the next day. And I can remember telling the, the nurses in the casualty that my hands and feet were on fire. And when they felt them, they said, no, they were ice cold. After that, I don't have any memory. I didn't know what I was going to expect, so walk into the ICU to see somebody totally different. Colour change had already kicked in. She was like a light grey on, in the face and all that. By that stage, her hands had already started to go, to go black. Um, her feet going black. The nose had already uh, started taking effect and working its way into the system. So it was like frostbite. They were doing blood test after blood test to find out what had caused the, the septicemia. And unfortunately, they couldn't pinpoint exactly how the bacteria had got into my bloodstream and caused such havoc. You suddenly get awoken and get told that you've, you've had a traumatic uh, situation, accident, and you're now going to have limbs amputated and they needed her permission to, to amputate. I first said, well, you've got to do what you've got to do. I've got a daughter that looks up to me and I have to show her that it doesn't matter what is put in front of you, you have to tackle it. You can't, you can't give up because what example would I be to show her? And uh, he said, fine, you're going to be amputating her hands and her, her legs. What are you going to do about her face? And they had to show me that my, my nose had turned black, my lips had turned black. Um, I had no gum on my, my top jaw, so those operations would also have to come after I had my amputations on my arms and my legs. When I was wheeled into my first operation to have my legs amputated on the 6th of February 2017, you don't normally sit up and look around the, the operating room and Something said to me, sit up and look behind you. And when I looked behind me, on top of the door, there was a, a cross. And I knew there and then everything was going to be OK. I was, I was going to be looked after and I would get through anything that, that was to come. My name is Tam and I am Shan's cousin. She's always been like a big sister to me, so it was very heartbreaking. And then when I came out, it was outside of your hospital room and I looked in and it was like the first time I'd seen her with no legs. And I think that moment was when it all became reality. And I walked in there and she was this light. She was so uh, graceful, if that, and she was so happy and she was just, she lifted all my spirits and from that moment, Shan has done that for me and for so many people. She just, she's so comfortable in, in this and not comfortable in a negative way, in the most beautiful way. She's just so positive and she's, she's, I really do feel like this is like a rebirth for her. Every couple and whatever has the good days and the bad days, but my job is there to make sure that she doesn't go down because she's a hell of a positive. <laughs> Unbelievable determination to tell her story and share with people and determined to survive. Having said that, she's been through close to 60 operations in a period of four years, less than four years. It takes strength of character to come back from each and every one of those. And now she's starting to be able to tell her story and help others who have, who have faced the same situation that she has. Um, my dad has your questions, Kay. How cool is it? I'm loving the setup. It is. Hey, Shane's now getting involved in uh, in a talk show, TV talk show. When you've been bullied as a child, it kind of goes into your young adult years. People might be nasty, but try and just forget about that and focus on the good that's out there. I have decided to do this talk show to motivate and encourage other people. You've become a specialist at hospitals now, hey? About 66. I heard that. I can't even count up to that number. Yeah. <laughs>
people are going to find it fascinating what other people go through and what rare illnesses are out there that they've never heard before and hopefully they'll be educated a bit on what people go through. People must come out, they must tell their stories. The condemning thing about having lupus is that people say, well, you don't look sick. You, you're dancing with death and that fear and that horror, you know, I was looking down the barrel of a gun. I'm going to change people's lives one person at a time who have gone through what I've been through and felt the same way. Yeah. Everybody's challenges are different and it's, it's the way that you tackle them and the way you see them. I, mean, I don't think people realise exactly how much it costs being, a, being an amputee. I did have prosthetic legs and uh, I can remember my prosthetic guy bringing my legs to me and saying, I'm a double leg amputee, it's a bit difficult for people to sort of get the gist of things. And I said to him, there's no ways you can bring my legs and put them in front of me and say, today you're just going to sit and stand. I was determined to walk and I saw a walker, I asked him to bring me the walker and I was up and walking. Unfortunately, with my skin being so sensitive after everything I've gone through, all the operations, and aesthetics, and antibiotics, I became allergic to the liners and started getting a terrible rash. I went to my, another prosthetic guy in Durban and he said that we're going to have to try something else. And he started talking to me about an operation that's done overseas called osteointegration. Now this entails a titanium rod that is put into the existing bone in your leg and then the prosthetic is attached to that. So there's no invasive socket over my leg. Um, but because it's a new thing done in South Africa, medical aid is, a, is still not sure of what the outcome is and the success rate. So unfortunately, they have declined this operation. So if I don't raise the funds myself, I'm going to be stuck in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. The only thing that's stopping me from getting up and, and walking is having legs. I'm not a, a paraplegic who's bound to a wheelchair because she can't walk. It's because I don't have my legs to, to walk. I chose to be a warrior, to carry on and not sit back and think, you know, let me just give up because of, of what I've gone through. And it's also important to know that what you're going through, it's not easy. No. It's not, but it life is in difficult. general is not easy. It doesn't matter who it is, whether yes. you have a disease yes. or a disability. Yes. Everybody goes through their, their own battle. Absolutely. What's really important is also not just to motivate and inspire other people through my talk show, is also to raise funds for me to get my legs and have this operation done. And also maybe in the future for medical aids and, and them out there to realize that this is a successful operation and how it will benefit other people. Oh, gorgeous. Divine. Yes. Stunning. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you.